Welcome everyone. This is the Small Business Resources, Assistance, and Safety during COVID-19 webinar. I'm Andy Constable, and I'm the Economic Development Manager for the County of Santa Cruz, and I'll be your host today. Just as a reminder, today's webinar has several broadcast options. It is being broadcast live on CTV YouTube channel, the county's Facebook page, and also on CTV channel Comcast Channel 25 and Charter Channel 71, both of which will be available for replay. The slides and video links from today's webinar will also be posted on the Economic Development website for the county, sccvitality.org. Today's agenda and speakers range uh, a, from a variety of topics. With us today is Doug Erickson, Executive Director for Santa Cruz Works, who will be speaking about local business support programs. Lieutenant Roy Morales from the Sheriff's Office of the County, which will be speaking to business protection program. Candace Elliott from Fortress and Flourish, who will be speaking about managing human resources in your business. Andy Stone, the Director of the County Workforce Development, who will be addressing unemployment assistance and Brandon Napoli, the director of the SBDC, will be discussing small business funding sources. And at the end, we'll be answering our, the questions that are posted in the chat column as best as we can. We've added a disclaimer page before we get started, and the reason for this is because although we make every effort to try to bring you the most current and relative information, it does change pretty frequently. As a matter of fact, we're seeing it almost daily. So before you make any final decisions or take actions, we recommend that you verify the information and also, if possible, check with your local professionals such as your accountant or uh, legal assistants. And with that, I will turn it over to Doug Erickson, the Executive Director for Santa Cruz Works. Hi, thank you, Andy. Uh, good to be here. Uh, we, uh, as many of you know, we had our first ride out the wave on April 2 through 4, and through the generous donations of Santa Cruz County Economic Development, thank you Andy and, and Bonnie with uh, City of Economic Development, we had $10,000 of matching funds and we had Taylor Ray, a musician, uh, play. And during that time, over $40,000 worth of gift certificates were purchased. We're gonna do it again on April 24th and we have, uh, Thanks to the generosity of our tech businesses, including Amazon, Santa Cruz, Looker Data, MBEP, and Community Foundation, we now have $40,000 worth of matching funds. And we'll have uh, our, our endearing Keith Greeninger uh, playing music for us. Our goal is to drive more than $160,000 worth of gift certificates for all of our favorite businesses. Next slide, please. We've established a new meetup called CEO Works, and this is a way to connect CEOs, uh, um, sort of a peer-to-peer -peer confidential way to get together and talk to other CEOs, two hours a month. And uh, we divide it up by SMB in, in mid-size. Uh, it's run by Silicon Valley tech veterans, John Marshall and John Dickinson. And the sponsors for this event include both Santa Cruz County Business Council and Santa Cruz Works. Next slide, please. We're very proud of the tech community coming together and creating a group to produce uh, PPE. And uh, there's actually a site out there called PPE4CC.org, I believe it is, could be com. And uh, they're producing both face shields and cloth masks roughly a thousand per day. And uh, those uh, tech community, that tech community is made up of Idea Fab Labs, Joby Aviation, Land Trust of Santa Cruz, Parallel Flight, Santa Cruz Bicycles. And there's a few more out there uh, that are slowly coming to, uh, to help out, including Cabrillo College and UCSC. Uh, in our first week, we delivered 1,000 to New York City where they really needed it and then some 400 to Indiana, 400 to the uh, uh, vaccine um, uh, project up at UCSC. Uh, and we have another 20,000 on order for both Monterey County as well as for uh, Santa Cruz County Health. Next slide, please. 
Lastly, on May 6, we have a fireside chat with uh, 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 moderated by Guy Kawasaki, and it's the uh, groundbreaking team of UCSC that will be uh, Guy will be talking to, including David Hausler, Rebecca Dubois, and uh, Jeremy, and I can't think of his last name, but he's not on the slide here. Uh, but they'll be talking about how they've modified the the, the human uh, the human genome browser to be able to uh, detect uh, RNA um, specific to COVID-19. Their work they now have a um, uh, a one day uh, test out, and they're work, uh, they're working also on the vaccine. Uh, so please join us May 6 at 7 p.m. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. So the sheriff's office has taken uh, the approach of protecting our businesses throughout the county. And the way we're doing that is we've increased our staffing model uh, for day shift and night shift where we have extra deputies throughout the county. And we've tasked them with identifying all the at-risk businesses. And by at-risk, I mean those businesses are kind of tucked away um, with large bushes in front and aren't as easily seen from the general street. So we have them doing some foot patrol, identifying security improvements for each business. And that can be cameras, uh, maybe clearing things from their windows. So a deputy passing by can see through the window more easily and see if there's anything going on within that business. Um, and then we also, we drop off crime prevention cards that provide a phone number for future contact. And we try to coordinate with those business owners. So when we're through this um, pandemic, we can go back and, and meet with them and actually walk the business with each one. Next slide, please. So again, our deputies are, when there is someone there at the business, they're obtaining the name, the address, all their contact information, because many times they have um, a lead person or a manager that actually goes and checks on the business. So we're, we're obtaining that information the date and time of our visits, which we're logging, and the suggested security enhancements. And that can be from when they're there with a the business owner or manager or just things that are seen. Um, next slide. The Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office understands this is a tough time for many businesses, especially those that have to close for an extended period of time or have decreased their hours of operation. That's why we want to make sure business owners know what our office is doing to keep their businesses secure during this shelter in place. We provide extra checks for any businesses that are going to be closed long term. Um, we also provide a team that can come to your business and help you out with security measures, like making sure you have cameras in the right places, um, making sure that your windows are uncovered. There's not places where it would make it easier for people to break into your business. So we provide all those kind of services, as well as the constant just everyday patrol that we do and extra checks that we do throughout the county. If you are interested in having someone from our office come out to inspect your business, please call 831-454-7689. Thank you. Next slide, please. And that, that uh, public service announcement actually went out both in English and in Spanish, and it's gotten some good hits. That went through Facebook, and that also went out through Instagram. Um, and then as you see in this slide, these are the cards that we're dropping off. Although it says home security inspection, the phone number is the same. And we encourage people to sign up on our home security inspection website where they can actually register their video cameras if they have any around the business, which we can then go in and help them out with or check for um, any type of theft in their area. Next slide, please. Again, we're providing um, security recommendation, enhanced business security plans, and to date, our, our deputies have contacted and been by at least 56 businesses throughout the county from Davenport all the way down to Watsonville and the Pajaro Valley community. Next slide. And what we've seen, um, the amount of commercial burglaries has actually um, gone down some from last year at this time. So the numbers that we're currently seeing, commercial burglaries reported to the sheriff's office are 11. 
Um, and that's all that we've seen throughout the county. Next slide. Thank you. Thank you, Roy, and all of our public safety officers. Um, my name is Candace Elliott, and I'm the owner of Fortress and Flourish, providing human resource management support mainly to small businesses and nonprofit organizations. And over the past month or so, I've become a specialist in managing human resources during COVID-19. Next slide, please. So I was asked to speak with you today about rebuilding and you know what it looks like when we rebuild our companies. And I think an essential piece of that is for us to lay a solid foundation. And I'm gonna outline five components of this type of a foundation. Next slide. So the first thing is to look at your policies. So this isn't just your company handbook and your job descriptions and offer letters, but also the way that you bring your employees into your company through recruitment and onboarding, the way that um, people exit your company through terminations and then through just normal offboarding. And um, these processes can tend to be chaotic for employees. And so this is a time when you can focus on these processes and to refine them. Another thing to look at is your company's employer brand. So like your company brand, it helps you to target, uh, instead of your ideal customer, your ideal employee. So who are they? What do they care about? And then how do you connect with them? Next slide. So the next second step here is to refine your systems. Um, I think in every single business that I've ever started or worked in or assisted, it's had some kind of clunky or inefficient system. Um, and so the way, one of the best ways that we can increase the effectiveness of our staff and to control our labor cost is by working on refining those systems and um, limiting the amount of duplicate work that has to happen. And um, so key systems include time tracking, payroll, doing time off requests or you know, medical leave, vacation leave, and then our systems around training and development. Next slide, please. Uh, so the, the next thing is to look at the changed economy. Um, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about just getting back to the way that things were. And I think that realistically, we should consider more long term. We should be prepared for some form of shelter being in place through the summer, potentially into the fall. And so when you consider that, that then how do you move forward? And you can always you know, hop off that plan and um, accelerate that plan. But if you, you know, kind of consider what is happening now, uh, the way that you react will be different in each different type of business. So if you look at the current economy, what will serve your clients best in this current situation that we're in right now? Rather than hoping for it to change and be different, how do we react to what there is? Um, so then how do you adjust your staffing to meet their needs? Do you start bringing people back as I've started seeing companies do? Um, and then as you're uh, considering rehiring, looking at the funding that you have available to you and the funding that you have been awarded or potentially may be awarded and how that fits into your future plan. Slide, please. And so the fourth thing is to connect with your past and your future employees. And so your, your employees, your past employees, your potential future employees, have many needs. They're experiencing a lot of uncertainty right now. And um, you, whether you realize it or not, may have better access to resources than they do. And, um, you know, resources of information and, um, you know, resources that can help them to get through this time. And um, if, if people are interested in learning more about your business or your brand or technical skills, you know, getting that information out into the community. And then when you are bringing people back um, into your company, issuing them a rehire offer letter. Um, so that letter should outline the name of the position, the start date, the pay, and any benefits. Um, 
this is this letter um, will help you to be able to prove that you have offered this person a position um, in the future. Next slide, please. Uh, so then kind of the last thing that I want to touch on is your capacity as a leader. So effective leadership during times in crisis has many different aspects to it, but a, a few of the key ones is the ability to hold multiple perspectives and multiple futures. So to be able to hold in your mind the different ways that things could move forward and to create plans for each of those different things. To develop the capacity of your team um, when there is uncertainty, to cross train, to um, provide them with further development in their chosen field, um, to communicate your plan um, or to communicate your intent to create a plan. And then to remember that we build resilience through adversity. And so during this time, we're building our resilience for any future challenges that we will face. And next slide. Um, so if you're looking for any inspiration around leadership, I recommend these two books, Eaters, Leaders Eat Last and On Becoming a Leader. Um, I actually read them when I was doing my master's degree and each of them has like so many uh, different like quotes that I've underlined and go back to in times of uh, challenge. And next slide. So I'd like to introduce Andy Stone with the Workforce Development Board. Hey, thanks, Candice. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about pandemic unemployment assistance. Uh, next slide. So just, and maybe just to step back from the slide for a second here, but to let you know that the Workforce Development Board does not oversee the pandemic unemployment assistance program. That is overseen by EDD. Um, EDD is not available to to give a presentation now, obviously, because they're slammed with all of the unemployment claims that they're currently processing. Uh, but I wanted to share this resource with the community and I'm going to give you everything I know here today. So there's going to be a lot of information, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to help you with like your specific questions about whether I um, am able to uh, collect pandemic unemployment assistance. So going back to the slide now, um, the broad overview of it is it was part of the CARES Act and it really is intended to help the people that are regular unemployment assistance uh, system left behind. So we're talking about business owners, self-employed, independent contractors, including uh, gig workers, um, have people who have limited work history. So maybe someone who just got hired right before the shelter in place started. And, you know, as a catch all others who are not um, usually eligible for regular unemployment insurance benefits. Next slide, please. So here you'll see a matrix. It's a, it's a lot of information on one slide, but I'll go through each column here, starting with covered individuals. This is what I was discussing uh, before, which is really looking at independent contractors, self-employed individuals without sufficient work history to collect regular unemployment insurance, individuals who have exhausted their regular and any extended UI benefits. So if you've been on unemployment insurance and you've maxed out on your time, you could still potentially apply for this pandemic unemployment assistance. And there is a requirement that you have to self-certify that you're able to work, except uh, you're unemployed due to COVID-19 related reason. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, amount of benefits. So the minimum weekly benefit amount is $167, but you could qualify for a higher amount um, based upon your earnings. So keep that in mind as you're putting together your application. Plus there's $600 available uh, for the weeks between March 29th and July 25th. And the benefits uh, actually are, apply retroactively back to February 2nd. So regardless of when, when you file a claim, you can claim back to the time you were unemployed uh, going back to February 2nd. 
and you'll be able to, uh, jumping to the next column, receive up to 39 weeks of benefits um, minus any regular unemployment insurance that you receive uh, from February 2nd, 2020, all the way through December 26, 2020. Next slide. So before I mentioned it had to be a COVID-19 related reason, I put them on the slide here for you. I'm not going to read all 11 for you, but this presentation is going to be available uh, later today at sccvitality.org. That's SCC is in Santa Cruz County, vitality.org. And you'll see the reasons here. They, they, they basically just outline what, what you need to show to prove that you're unemployed due to a COVID-19 related reason. Okay, next slide, please. So other, other considerations here, if you're not a citizen of the United States, you cannot be paid a pandemic unemployment assistance unless you were legally permitted to work in the United States. Um, in addition, you must be authorized to work for any week of assistance that you claim to be eligible for. Next slide. So claims will be, you can file your claim as of this coming Tuesday. April 28th. So I checked right before we got on this webinar today and EDD still does not have a website um, dedicated to accepting these pandemic unemployment assistance claims. I know they're working on getting it together as well as some specific instructions about how to file the claim. But I put here EDD's homepage, edd.ca.gov is a place for you to check before uh, Tuesday, April 28th. Um, I, we anticipate that instructions will be on there. And later in the presentation here, I have slides with links in them that will take you directly to um, more information on this assistance. And also, if you're unsure, if you're an independent contractor and employee, you may have been misclassified. Um, EDD recommends that you file regular unemployment insurance uh, benefits and they'll sort out what you're eligible for. Next slide. So how soon after you submit your application can you expect to receive your pandemic unemployment assistance benefits? So if you are approved and after completing the certification process, you may be able to receive your first payment within approximately two days. That's if you have an existing EDD debit card. Um, if you don't, then you can expect within four to seven days when new debit cards and checks are mailed. Next slide. And my last slide here is for more information, here are a couple um, areas that I recommend you visit. Um, basically this whole slide presentation was taken from these two websites. So I wanted to make them available for you here. EDD's Pandemic Unemployment Assistance website, which is too long to say and probably too long to write down. So again, this will be on the sccvitality.org website. I recommend you check it out and click on the links. And then the California Labor and Workforce Development Agency also has some information on a PUA website that I recommend you check out. So next slide. And now I'd like to introduce Brandon Napoli from the SBDC. Hey, thank you, Andy. Uh, my name is Brandon Napoli. I'm the director of the Small Business Development Center located here at Cabrillo College. Uh, we have been here for a little over 30 years, uh, focused on helping businesses in Santa Cruz County start and grow. And I'm going to be talking about the financial developments uh, specifically from the federal uh, and state, um, and then a little bit locally as well. So as I'm sure everyone is aware of, uh, the CARES Act went into um, law on March 27th. Um, that had two different types of loan programs, the Payment Check Protection Program, known as the PPP, and the IDLE, Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Uh, the PPP has been exhausted on this first tranche. Um, the idle 
uh, continues. We, we see people in the queue for that, and I'm going to get more into details on each one of those programs right now. Uh, so a recent development, actually just within the last hour, the president signed in what some are calling CARES Act 3.5, uh, $484 billion, and this is uh, comprised of $60 billion for EIDL, and that's $50 billion for the loan and $10 billion for the advance. I'll get into details on the difference between those two. Uh, the rest of it was for the PPP payment, uh, paycheck protection program, 310 billion overall. Uh, 250 billion is going to be dispersed through all types of uh, lenders. And then 60 billion is now being earmarked for the community-based lenders and mid-sized banks and credit unions. Uh, the rest of it was um, geared towards the healthcare, hospitals, and testing. So overall, there are four different SBA products, the PPP, uh, the IDLE, uh, which has a 10K advance, um, the SBA Express Bridge Loan Program, and also SBA Debt Relief. So getting more into the weeds with the Payment Prote Protection Program, this is a 100% federally guaranteed loan uh, with the following goals of helping to uh, keep um, your employees uh, either, you know, ideally working, but definitely employed. Um, this covers near-term operating expenses between February 15th and June 30th. Uh, most businesses are eligible if you have fewer than 500 employees. Uh, this includes uh, now sole props and independent contractors, which I'll get into a little bit more detail, which were allowed to start to apply last week. Um, additionally, 501c19s can apply for this uh, program. Loans are not uh, uh, supposed to be over 10 million. There's obviously been some backlash if you look into the news on large organizations taking some of these loans. Um, and with the CARES 3.5, um, 60 billion going towards the smaller credit unions and, and banks and CDFIs there's been a move towards trying to get more of this money to the small business owners. Uh, additionally, um, sole props and contractors can apply for this. They were the last to be able to. Um, and so when this reopens and what we've been told is Monday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time uh, that the SBA will open up the faucet to allow banks to start to process this loan. Uh, but my recommendation is that you uh, apply with your bank now uh, and get into the queue um, as soon as possible. Here we'll get into a little bit more details if you're a sole prop on how you actually can calculate this amount. Again, these slides will be on uh, the website sccvitality.org uh, if you need to refer to the actual calculation, uh, as well as the, I didn't mention this, but the Small Business Development Center, we have advisors that provide uh, free of cost services to small businesses to help them um, fill out this paperwork and apply. Uh, we have weekly conversations with, the, with several banks to understand where they are um, with processing these applications. Uh, so if you need help with this, and uh, by all means, please reach out uh, to, to us. Our website is santacruzsbdc.org. Um, this program can be used for payroll expenses um, primarily, but it can also be used for uh, interest on mortgage, rent, lease payments, utilities, um, interest on other, other debt obligations. Uh, regarding fees, there is no fees to the borrower. I want to make this a strong point. Um, there are a lot of scams developing out there. You should not be paying any fees. Uh, if you're working with a uh, middle person, uh, the, that person may charge a fee to the bank, but they may not charge a fee to the business. You should not be paying fees for this type of a loan. Uh, the term is up to two years. The first six months are deferred. Um, interest rate is 1%. No collateral, no personal guarantees on this. Uh, and probably the most important thing is um, that the, there's a loan forgiveness, 75% or more uh, needs to be spent on payroll costs. 
Um, and the rest, the 25% um, can be spent on the rent, utilities, and interest payments, but that what is spent on um, that uh, on, on those items can be will be forgiven. Uh, something to take into consideration: um, some banks are asking that you set up a checking account. Um, I do think that is a best practice that you you really start to document, and that starts with creating a different account that the money goes in, and what you expense out of it. Uh, there's not enough guidance on the back side um, to know exactly how this is going to be. Um, audited and so the, the more that you can uh, keep track of uh, the money that you received and the money and how you spent the money uh, the best case you have to not have a headache with um, having this be forgiven if you're if you don't have a lender uh, the, there is a website here sba.gov um, backslash paycheck protection backslash find uh, which has different lenders here in Santa Cruz uh, my recommendation is to go with the one that you have the best relationship with, probably go with the, the smaller bank as well. Um, so typically I've seen from the clients that we work with, uh, they have uh, been more responsive to their clients as the, um, uh, some other banks have seems to be overwhelmed with, with trying to service clients nationwide. Um, also, uh, there are online uh, lenders that are offering their services. Um, the one that I would pretty much only recommend is called Funding Circle. Uh, they've been um, endorsed by um, other nonprofits that um, believe that they are doing a fair job at processing this. Moving on to the idle loan, uh, two parts of this. There's the 10,000 that's forgiven that can be really used for anything. Uh, this is, we've been told, determined by equating $1,000 per employee that you have, that you're eligible for this. Um, if you uh, were, if you already applied and, and did not apply for this, you can go back through the, the portal. Um, if you go on the SBA's website and ask to, um, and, and click a box to actually uh, request this $10,000 advance, um, Eligibility wise, you need to be in operations at the beginning of the year. Also meet the SBA uh, table size standards um, and the rest of this list. Uh, uh, you can also be uh, a 501c3 with fewer than 750 employees too. Um, moving on, uh, maximum loan size of 2 million. Uh, we've seen in the first tranche, the average loan size was just over $200,000 in California. Um, so we're uh, pretty optimistic that those that are getting the loans are getting um, a decent amount of the working capital. We recommend that you do apply for six months of working capital for this. Uh, the terms, 30 years, 11 months deferment on the payments, uh, low interest rates, there are no prepayment penalties no uh, collateral requirements up to 25,000. Um, if you're an owner of 20% or more, uh, you need to be involved in this, but you're not gonna have a personal guarantee unless you, you apply and get approved for over 200,000. As I mentioned, there's are also other SBA programs, the SBA Express Bridge Loan uh, being one of them. Uh, we are looking for local lenders that are offering this. Uh, most SBA, uh, lenders are overwhelmed right now uh, processing the PPP loans. Uh, on our website, uh, santacruzsbdc.org, we do have a list of all SBA lenders in the county um, that you can take a look at and try to connect with another one. Uh, but this is a loan that's supposed to be uh, very quick to access and up to 25,000. Um, I also want to mention if you're in the city of Santa Cruz, uh, they also have relaunched a, a, a microloan program. Um, and so you can look on their website to find out more information. Uh, SBA debt relief. If you currently have an SBA loan, a 7A 504 micro loan, uh, your payments over the next six months will be taken care of by the SBA. Uh, so that is um, a more recent development and uh, one that ideally will help um, alleviate any kind of current debt obligations. 
Moving on to California, California iBank uh, has been set up to uh, offer really two different products. One is their focus on um, microloans, uh, and this is being offered through uh, different banks willing to participate um, and uh, work with uh, institutions that are guaranteeing their loans. Cal Coastal, located in uh, Salinas, is one of those um, that is guaranteeing loans. Here uh, I have listed a couple of banks who have offered this in the past. Santa Cruz Community Credit Union, Heritage Bank, Pinnacle Bank, Pacific Valley Bank and California Farm Link specifically focused on ag. Uh, again, it, uh, I recommend you reach out and to see where they, um, what they're doing with this product. Uh, but this is one specifically geared towards those businesses that are ineligible um, or have been turned down for the PPP or IDLE loan. Um, several nonprofits or ag um, would qualify, or if you have credit issues, may qualify if you weren't maybe in business during that, um, that initial uh, start date of the beginning of the year. Um, this might be a better program for you. Uh, the interest rate is, is fair at prime uh, plus 1%. Uh, the last thing on this slide, there is a sales tax def um, deferral program, and I have a link right there. If you've made less than $5 million in taxable annual sales, uh, you can take care. You can take advantage of a payment um, program, 12 months interest free, for up to 50,000 of sales and use tax liability only. Uh, for more information, visit that website. Uh, additionally, we were starting to see some uh, grants uh, come into consideration. Here's one Verizon offers. If you just look up Verizon Small Business Recovery Fund. Uh, you should be able to apply at this point. Um, I was just made aware that Salesforce also looks like they were creating some type of a grant program. Uh, I, I don't have any information on that uh, at this point, but again, look into Salesforce for their grant program as well as Verizon Small Business Recovery Fund. Uh, I understand that every penny really goes a long ways, especially if it's a grant. Thank you, Brandon. So what we'll do at this point is see if we can answer some of the questions that have uh, come up in the chat. So give us a moment here for that. Uh, looks like it's uh, one from, I have a small business uh, self-employed and had one employee starting on March 17th, the day we went into shelter in place. I have not had a, received the stimulus or any response from the idle application or EDD? Do you know why? Um, Brandon or Andy, could you handle that one? We've got uh, a, a loan specialist as well on uh, Scott Rogalski. Scott, you might be best to, to speak specifically into that. Yes, yeah, definitely. Uh, can you repeat the question real quick? Yeah, um, they've applied for an idle loan and an application to the EDD, uh, but they haven't heard anything. Um, and oh, yeah. I think, yeah, and they're self-employed with one employee. Okay, cool. Yeah, it depends on when they applied for the idle. If they, they applied for the idle after March 29th, then they're still in the queue and SBA is going to get back to them, even though they shut down the web portal. Um, and if they're... Uh, if they're a sole proprietor um, with one employee, they can also apply for the triple P um, also when it relaunches. Actually, the monies don't come out to the marketplace till Monday, but they can still apply and get a hold of me or, or Brandon and still apply to get their name in the queue so they're ready. And then EDD, um, the whole thing about EDD as a sole proprietor, um, legislation hasn't really come out for that yet per se, but we're waiting on that. Okay, um, that pretty much is it as far as questions. We were pretty light this time. Um, look like I'm getting a couple more here. While the PPP second wave has been launched, the expectation is that it will again be exhausted. Uh, I'd like to suggest surveying all Santa Cruz County small businesses to explore the need so that we can present it to the leaders. We'll definitely take a look at that. Um, I called my bank where I have my business account and they said that they don't take any more PPP applications. 
I called my personal bank and they said, I need a business account. How can I apply? So you're going to have to go to a, a lending institution that's not a bank um, or is a bank, but they're taking non-customers. The best one that we know about is, is called Lendistry. I can put it in the chat, but um, you can go online and apply right now with Lendistry and they'll put your name in the queue. And the great thing about Lendistry is that they're not a Chase bank, so you're not going to be 100,000 person in the waiting list. You're going to probably be one, you know, 500 or you know, 1000 or whatever, but not 100,000, but yeah, I'll put it in the, I'll put it in the link. If you need help applying and getting all your paperwork ready together for this, this is something that uh, Brandon and his team can do at no cost. Um, but I recommend that you go to this website and apply. The only thing about Lendistry is that their maximum for the triple P is uh, 250,000. Uh, that's their max that they'll do. Okay. Um, after receiving the PPP regarding the eight weeks to start paying payroll, what happens if we are still not open for business? Do we pay employees for not working? Yes. Uh, the triple P, if you get the money for the triple P, the eight weeks start the day you get the money. And if you, um, if you're not open, you're supposed to pay your people to sit at home. That's unfortunately, that's the way the, the, the law was written. And, um, that's why it's a kind of a tricky loan, but if you get funded, the only way you're going to get it all forgive, forgivable or most of it is if you spend it mostly on payroll in the first eight weeks. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just add to that because it's been a question that's come up in a lot of different webinars, uh, paying employees for not doing their traditional work. It doesn't seem like it fits the box, but this is, you know, thinking outside the box here of, what are the things that you would hope uh, that you could have gotten accomplished that you didn't have the resources to do before, or just trying to potentially even um, start to think differently about the, the job descriptions uh, and what your employees are doing. Uh, but you know, overall, uh, the, the employees may never come back to their exact job. And so to kind of think through what they could do even start to do or, or start to prepare for uh, and use that time wisely. Uh, another uh, PPP question regarding, uh, uh, here it is. Um, bear with me a sec. Uh, if I get the PPP funds, I will have to pay my employees even though they're at home. I understand that I am planning on paying them a fixed average amount for the eight weeks so that I qualify for the loan forgiveness. Is this advisable? Uh, so, I mean, whatever, all right, so whatever status the people are that, that you furloughed or let go, where they were before you let them go, whether they're full-time or part-time, that's what you need to hire them back as. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's the, the basic part of it. Uh, so I'm not sure if there was another question inside that. Kind of on the same uh, frame of mind, uh, says, can I pay certain employees more than they were and less money to another employee? For example, manager versus new hire, is the PPP loan forgiveness looking at each individual payment? Yeah, so they are they are looking. We haven't actually gotten a word yet on that answer. If uh, if you can hire somebody back and pay them more, so we'll have to parking lot that and get back to you. Uh, lastly, I applied for a B of A loan. They said they would submit my app this time, but I don't trust them. Should I start elsewhere? <laughs> um, I, I would say so if I were you. The big banks are going to be the hardest to get through. Um, and as we mentioned, the, the $260 billion is probably going to be gone. It's going to launch Monday, but probably be gone by Friday. So uh, I would apply. I would apply it as at a, a bank that is not a brick and mortar that you can just go online and apply like Lendistry or some other ones that exist. Uh, like there's a bank called T bank T is in Tom. Uh, they're out of Texas, but they do national SBA 7A loans. So you could uh, technically 
go online and apply with them. And there's some other ones too. Um, I think we're going to wrap it at that point. Um, I want to thank everybody for their participation, all the speakers, and I also want to thank everybody for listening in. Uh, stay safe, uh, stay healthy, and uh, we will hopefully be back to you with uh, more information in a couple of weeks. Um, and I will look forward to it at that time. Thank you again for your participation.